Yeah, so welcome to this uh, session on languages and TESOL. So we're going to introduce ourselves and then actually we'll um, possibly ask you a few questions about what you're doing here and why you're here and what you expect from, from your studies. There's not many of us, so I think we can make for a, a fairly interactive session. All right, so my name is Eric Bouvet. I'm professor of French here at Flinders University. I've been here for 25 years, so it's been a while and I've seen a range of students uh, uh, and, and I'm, you know, that's a, a job that I absolutely love. I, I love being in class, I love teaching French and I love the contact with, uh, with students. Uh, we're, in, we're in a small team in languages, so um, we have here Stefano. So Stefano, you might have guessed, is from which language discipline do you reckon? Do you want to say something? What do you reckon? I'm from... Chinese. <laughs> no, is, it, is, it, is it Spanish, do you reckon? Is it Spanish? No, I'm it's teaching Spanish. Italian. Is it French? Is it French? No, no. it's Italian. I'm All Italian, right. yeah. So, yes, I've been around Flinders also for uh, 13 years now. And uh, I used to take lessons from Eric when <laughs> I joined Flinders at the beginning as a uh, master student. I did my PhD here. And now I'm, uh, I'm uh, the lecturer in Italian. So, um, interestingly, I arrived here because, I, well, I, I learned Chinese and that brought me to Australia. So, um, well, uh, talking about languages that change life, yes, in my case, it, it was, it really happened. So, um, firstly, welcome and uh, we should also give an acknowledgement that we are meeting on Ganalandes. If you were downstairs, you already know. So, Mani, Mani Naputni Gana Yata Ana. So, before we start getting into our session that would be very informal and interactive, as Eric said, can we have a bit of uh, uh, introduction from yourselves? Um, um, What's your name? What brought you here? What language are you planning to study and why? I can go first. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, my name is Imogen, but everybody calls me Amy. Um, what brought me here was I wanted to learn... Um, what brought me here was I wanted to learn Italian. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> After I finished learning Italian, I want to move to Sydney and go to fashion school. And then hopefully in 20, 30 years, I move to Italy. So. <laughs> All right, beautiful. Fantastic. Okay, hello, everyone. Um, my name is Hattakorn Intala. I'm from Laos. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I major in uh, TESO. Yeah, I want to be a teacher of the English, but yep. at a second language, I want to transfer my knowledge for my students, lovely students from remote area, yeah, at Laos, in Laos. So that's my expectation here. I want to be a teacher as a professional here, like a friend does. Yeah. Fantastic. Hi, everyone. My name is Hapri. Um, I'm doing Italian. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> um, my biggest interest in languages is because my background's Indian and I come from such a low economy sort of area that I also want to help people younger than me grow up with an advantage so they can seize their future. <laughs> but yeah, nice meeting you. Thank you. All right, um, I'm Jack. I am study, I'm going to study Japanese. Uh, I just, the reason why I, I pursued languages was because I just enjoyed learning them. Like I think talking with people from different countries, vastly different cultures and perspectives, I think is really cool and you can learn heaps from it. I'm not sure what I want to do with it yet, but you know, that's why I'm here. I'm going to figure that out. Excellent. Thank you. Alrighty, I don't have a really interesting story about why I'm doing it. Um, my name's Isaac. Um, I'm a permanently impaired veteran, so I don't actually have anything to do throughout the day. So I thought, why not give uni a crack? So I'm shitting it more than you guys are because you guys have just gone. It's been 14 years since I've studied, but doing Spanish and giving it a red hot crack. Yeah. Hi, I'm Anastasia. I'm doing French. Yes. Um, 
mainly I want to read French liter literature, and after doing this course, hopefully I will move to arts, doing arts. Maybe. Thank you. Thank you. Fantastic. Okay, thank you very much, everybody. So we've got a spread of languages. Now, we've got other people in this room uh, who I think uh, should also introduce themselves. So we've got two lecturers and two current students, and those two students at the back. Uh, I'm going to give you the mic in a second, but you are in is that second and third or third and third year? Second. Second, second and third. 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 I finished my third. I still it's have one semester. And That's right. OK. So Sarah, I'm giving you the mic. You can introduce yourself and tell everybody so hi, hi everybody. Uh, my name is Sara. Uh, I study Spanish and Italian. So I still have one semester to finish my study and to graduate. I studied before psychology as well. So yeah. Um, what? I also but know French. Yeah. That's right. So Sarah, it's yeah. important that you actually say you speak several languages. Yeah, of languages. course. Uh, I studied French. Oh, I know. And uh, Turkish as I live there, so yeah, and I think like uh, languages are really very fascinating and very important to learn and it um, expands one's own vision in life actually, yeah. Yeah, I love languages. What <laughs> languages you speak, is that right? Yeah, Arabic as well, my own language, yeah, of course. Yes. Uh, yeah, I've introduced myself to you guys, but yeah, I'm Jared. I'm um, second year um, in languages. Um, so I started last year um, with Bahasa Indonesia, which I'll be continuing uh, this year, uh, and a second major in applied linguistics. Um, but I'm also working towards yeah, being an English teacher um, in Indonesia. Um, so this is the reason I'm, I'm learning Indonesian. Um, just a, a bit of a side note as well my my wife is indonesian um so um apart from so bahasa indonesia is sort of the formal language but i've actually learned a couple of dialects as well um, from there so that's where language can take you as well yeah thank you very much guys that's that's great to have you here okay so we've got two staff here um now if you are first year students you are supposed to do a topic called Ling 1000, Strategies for Language Learning. Is anybody enrolled in that topic? Okay, so a few of you are enrolled in that topic, that's good. You're going to see me again in that topic and my colleague, Javier Diaz. Thanks, Eric. Thank you. And um, well, uh, good morning, everyone. And I am uh, one of the lecturers for Spanish and as Eric mentioned, I'm going to be continuing Ling 1000 with him. I would just like to take this chance just to congratulate you for choosing languages. You are the future of languages. I mean, we are living in a time when machines are helping us to do things much easier, including translation. But there will always be the need for people to supervise those machines, to make real connections with people. So. Welcome to a very selected group of language specialists. I'm looking forward to see you all in class. Thank you, Javier. And Javier makes a, a, an excellent point here. Obviously, you know, uh, the world is changing, technology is changing, and, uh, you know, the interaction between technology and languages is also changing. Um, and obviously, this uh, brings opportunities, but it also brings issues. Um, there is in the broader public, you know, uh, the understanding that languages may not be as important uh, nowadays that uh, we are, uh, you know, a connected world where everybody speaks English and we can actually use the technology to the advantage of people so that, you know, you can use apps to translate and all that kind of stuff. But we argue that, yes, this is good, this is helpful, this is, you know, this is progress. But at the end of the day, it's still very important to actually learn the language because it not only creates connections uh, you know, with other people, 
but it helps you understand the world in a different way. It gives you different perspectives. And it doesn't matter how much of a language you're going to do. You can do one semester, one year, two years, three years, like those guys are doing, and become, uh, and you know, attain several degrees of proficiency. It's still going to give you um, an, an advantage that people who are not multilingual uh, I don't have, you know, such as having different perspective on the world, such as uh, being able to uh, understand systems. We're looking at grammars, for example, and by looking at grammar, we do look at particular systems which are different from ours. So that gives us a different, a, a different perspective on, uh, you know, a variety of things such as cultures, uh, grammatical systems, vocabulary, and so on and so forth. And the great thing is that it can actually give you opportunities to, to travel, to meet people. Uh, all of us here um, were, were, uh, were born in different countries and we had one day an opportunity to learn a language and that language um, you know, brought us to where we are now. So we are very grateful from having learned a language, uh, not only you know, personally, but also uh, in, in the way that we, we work today, being able to actually partake uh, that, that knowledge and that passion for languages. So we hope that this is the start of a journey for you, which uh, will never end because, you know, language is, is basically part of you for the rest of your life. Now, uh, we have here uh, another colleague, Maria, who's going to... Do you want to say a few words, Maria? Okay, thank you. Good morning. My name is Maria Palaksoglu. I uh, teach Greek, modern Greek, that is. Um, I was born and raised in Greece, so um, I was very uh, well exposed to different languages from a very young age. It was compulsory for us to learn French, English, uh, ancient Greek, Latin, <laughs> and so forth. So um, in Greece, it was something that all students were doing. Every single one of us uh, had to study many different things. But what I have to say about languages is that it gives you the opportunity, every single language you learn, it gives you the opportunity to know your language better. That's one. Uh, the second thing is to communicate with another world and also understand uh, the cultural differences and uh, understand culture better. So um, studying a language really opens up your world as we used to say some years ago in our advertising campaign and broadens your mind you see the continuation from antiquity through to modern times also from uh, every different country and you compare it to yours so really it's an eye-opener and i welcome you to languages i wish you the best with every single language that you learn and all your future endeavors. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. Thank you. Uh, a question for you, thinking about perspective, thinking about uh, seeing a broader context. Um, is anyone aware of how many languages are there around the world other than English? No, I like dialects. Languages, Just like plus the dialects, but we focus on the languages. A rough figure. How many would you think? How many? 100, 500, 150? More than a thousand. More than a thousand and less than 10,000. Well, I mean, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think, I think you're, you're in that sense. That's the range. Yeah. So there's not a clear uh, figure, but um, uh, the current uh, revised statistics say that there are around uh, 7,100 languages around the world, 7,100 and on. And so uh, that means English, which we learn from the day we were born here in Australia, is one of them. Okay? So, that's also why learning a language is important. We really need to consider that we are part of an interconnected world and Australia is a part of that. So if we want to get out there and have some interaction with whoever is around, well, we need 
to talk in another way, we need to talk another language. We are in a multicultural society. We need also uh, to understand the language, and particularly, I think, in the case of Italian, uh, not only to go to the Italian restaurant and order a meal, but, I mean, there's a, a thriving community, the same for Greek. Uh, there are thriving uh, linguistic communities here, so uh, we also need to understand another culture through the language. That's the bridge that connects us. So, uh, good on you to start this journey. And um, can, can I, before we yeah. go to the presentation, because we've got a, a presentation for you, um, but before we start, can I ask who's starting at beginner's level? The language, okay? So, all right, most of you. So, um, you, sorry, I forgot your name. So you're doing Japanese, but you've already done Japanese at school. All right, okay, fantastic. And all of you are doing the language at beginner's level. All right, so that's a, 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 a fact that people don't really know very much, is that you can start a language at beginners with no prior knowledge at university. And this is the beginning of your journey. And it's a long journey. You can take the journey for as long as you want, or as short as you want. As I said, you know, some people might take an elective, and other people might actually go to, to the major and beyond. But it's a personal journey. You will all learn differently. You all have different goals in relation to why you want to learn a language. You all have different experiences in terms of your life experience, how much you've traveled, and possibly other languages that you've learned. And all this is going to contribute to, towards your learning of your language, your target language that you want to learn now. So it's an individual journey, but it's also a collective journey because you're not by yourself. You're going to be studying with other people uh, in classrooms and usually those classrooms those courts of languages are fairly small um, and you will get to know the students studying with you very well and you know if you want to take it all the way to third year you will be with those students some of those students for three years and it really creates a very uh, powerful bond uh, between people you'll be working together you'll be studying together you might do uh, you know role play together you might be doing projects together so it's a really, really um, important community that you're going to be part of. Okay, now, so my message is it's, it's, it's all right to be scared, it's all right to be uncomfortable to start with, but we are here to help you and to support you. And your uh, classmates are also there for you. So we'll, we'll love to make sure that you, know, you are supported uh, along your journey. Okay, so this being said, talking about family, we've got our Flinders language family here, which you can see on the board. So take uh, notice of the names that are relevant to you. So for French, there's two people. There's uh, someone called Christelle, Christelle Mezogno, and there is myself, Eric. Uh, then for Indonesian, there is uh, Tom, Tom Pao, who's not here today, who's a, a fantastic uh, lecturer in Indonesian. Uh, very I inspirational and um, now in Italian we have two people we've got my colleague here Stefano who you've already met but you also have also have uh, Antonio who will you will see as well yeah. I don't do you want to say anything about Antonio yeah, Antonio is uh, uh, let uh, sent here uh, from the Italian government and um, so he will take the uh, second year course, but he will also be available for, um, let's say, language support if you need to um, strengthen your Italian uh, over the semester or so. He will have some hours available uh, to meet students to give you some uh, conversation sessions or uh, checking some homework together or uh, trying to, to uh, reinforce your way you feel oh, I'm not so sure about this or that so he is very uh, available and very friendly so you would <coughs> like him then modern Greek we have Maria and also Antonios yeah 
Antonios is also uh, sent here from the Greek government. Uh, Spanish, uh, you already met Javier, and we don't have here the lecturers in Tizel, uh, we were uh, Mike Roy and Jeffrey Gill. Okay. So, and, uh, and, and my, I don't know whether you can, you can tell by name, my Vietn is Vietnamese. Yeah. And, uh, well, you may not see Japanese right here because Japanese is not one of the languages we're, we're teaching uh, uh, here at Flinders, but um, you're already probably aware that there's an agreement between our universities with uh, um, Adelaide Uni, and so uh, you can uh, study that cross institutionally there. By the way, there's uh, an orientation session there, I think, tomorrow. After yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure. excellent. Yeah. So, um, well, uh, if we are here, well, I think you already got some ideas about the, the importance of learning languages, but um, languages are also are more and more uh, important and more uh, looked after. Um, also, uh, for people who are trying to get into uh, a profession, so, of course, uh, there is uh, artificial intelligence, there are uh, online uh, translators and so on, um, but uh, we still need to uh, learn a language if we want to, if we work in certain uh, industries or so. Um, firstly, because it's been proven that learning a second language is also helping us to be better problem solvers because well we are we get more used to to switching between different ways of thinking and uh, and um, so that it gives us an advantage uh, uh, to uh, compare to who is uh, monolingual um, so as you can see uh, th these are some uh, points that are, are making learning a language uh, quite relevant uh, in the profession and also uh, in a general communication like um, presentation skills. Imagine that uh, all of us who are teaching here to you are uh, not native speakers of English and uh, today we are quite feeling quite confident in making uh, lengthy lectures and presentations. So, uh, it didn't happen in one day, <laughs> okay? Um, so, um, also ways of getting organized, uh, learning a language is also helping us to uh, achieve a better way to organize ourselves. Uh, and that's obviously a skill that is uh, well uh, sought uh, by uh, employers. As you can see, these are recent statistics uh, from 2023-2024. Uh, nearly uh, the increase, uh, the uh, annual growth uh, in uh, bilingual job postings in Australia um, uh, last year was about 5%. And uh, even if uh, your major uh, is not in humanities, but if you're studying uh, engineering or uh, STEM subjects or so on, uh, language is an advantage. Um, so uh, I'm not sure if that's the actual percentage, but uh, bilingual engineers uh, are generally uh, paid much better than monolingual ones. Okay, can I just make a quick point? Yeah. If you look at all the, the skills that are uh, listed here, it's really these things that we put an emphasis on in the language classroom. You're going to do teamwork. You will very frequently work with, with other students, whether it's formal work or whether it's just fast work. Um, obviously, intercultural knowledge is very important. We don't just teach language, but we also teach culture, and we teach this relationship between culture and, and language, which is absolutely fundamental to, to, to language learning. But, uh, you know, as I said, uh, a problem solving and cognition. I mean, it, it is a known scientific fact that language is actually beneficial to cognition. It might not be apparent uh, to you because you're, you're, you're still very young, but when you get to my age, you know, having to deal with two languages is actually uh, good because it's, it's brain gymnastics, basically. So it keeps your brain active and, 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 
and uh, you know for 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 a long time. Um, maybe another one that I, I'm very quickly going to talk about is transferable skills. So you learn a lot of things in languages, uh, and I'm going to take one example. Grammar, for example, uh, you need to have some grammatical notions, and those grammatical notions are, you know, they, they are very basic to start with, and then you're going to grow them. But they are really interesting because a lot of students report that learning a language, whether it's French, Spanish, Italian, um, modern Greek, or, or whatever language, help them with their own language, help them with understanding their yeah. own language. And talking about jobs, well, uh, here's a list of professions where uh, learning another language or possibly more than another language is definitely useful and beneficial. So uh, at the moment, for example, uh, you probably heard that this, uh, there's a, a huge shortage in, uh, of teachers and also uh, language teachers in, in particular. So. Um, that's something that you might consider for your profession. If you uh, study international relations, uh, well, uh, obviously you may get a placement somewhere around the world and obviously you may need to study uh, a couple of the languages or the countries where you are interested to be sent. Uh, if you are working for an NGO or uh, international aid or or even the defense, uh, that's also something that uh, it might become very important for you. If you follow international affairs in journalism uh, and you're planning to become a journalist, uh, that's something that you must learn. Uh, otherwise, uh, how can you uh, pretend or you expect to, to be uh, sent to uh, as a special uh, employee in, in Paris or in Rome if you don't speak the local language. Um, tourism, oh my goodness, <laughs> um, obviously hospitality, uh, think about uh, tourists after Covid, now they are finally back, uh, coming to Australia or maybe leading a, a group of tourists to uh, Europe or to uh, Indonesia. Uh, so obviously you need to speak that language. And of course, uh, trade, um, I, 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 in my personal case, um, I definitely found that uh, speaking Mandarin was important when I was uh, working in an Italian company. Uh, so, I, and dealing with Chinese suppliers, um, that broke many barriers and uh, helped to establish uh, relationships that were going beyond a simple business relationship and they, it helps to build trust. And of course translating, interpreting. Uh, one of our former students um, is now an interpreter for the European Union, so everything can happen, you know, and many other sports and so on. And you want to add anything? Yep. No, no, that's all right. Okay. Let's, we can move to the next one. Yep. Okay, so let's talk a, about language options. So um, you probably know that we are offering a number of languages. We offer five languages and we offer a TESOL as well. So French, Indonesian, Italian, Martin, Greek and Spanish. Um, you can do one or two or even, I think, possibly three languages if, uh, if, if you wish at the same time. But there's also obviously um, We've got an agreement, uh, a long-standing agreement with the University of Adelaide, and uh, students can engage in what is called cross-institutional studies, where they can, um, as Flinders students, uh, do one or two or more topics at another university. Here, uh, languages such as Chinese, German, and Japanese are available at the University of Adelaide. So what happens is that, as a Flinders student, you can enroll in a in an Adelaide Uni um, topic, and for that particular topic, you become an Adelaide University student. Now, if you've got questions about the process, um, we can uh, answer your questions at the end of the presentation. Yeah. And Joe, I Let's think you it. would you would also be able to advise students on yeah. cross-institutional studies. I can jump in. 
And that's right. Yeah. So Jo has arrived. Sorry, I, I, I forgot. <laughs> she's to, a to person to talk to. She's, she's a very important yeah. person. So Jo, um, I'm going to give you the mic. But, but Jo <laughs> is uh, from the administration, and she has a very important role to play in advising students. Hi everyone, my name's Jo Willis and I'm an enrolment and course advisor and I work from the Humanities Building in the College Front Office on Level 2. Um, you can pop up there any time and see if I'm available or make a time and you can also submit and ask Flinders request which has probably been covered in your slides earlier and you might have questions for me like I would like to study part-time so I'm not sure what topics I should choose first, um, I'd like to go on an exchange program overseas, how can I do that in my degree? Perhaps you've studied at another institution before and you think that maybe you can get credit for your previous studies, I can look at that. So they're the sorts of questions you can ask, but always please ask, we're very happy to get your questions and we'll sort through them as soon as we can. I think that's probably it. But if you have a cross-institutional um, study requirement, you do just submit and ask Flinders' request and then we will guide you through the process. Joe, sorry, you might find out, sometimes our students... Thanks. Sometimes our students start with maybe a couple of languages or TESOL and after the first year of studies they, they want to rethink or they want to adjust how much to study a language or TESOL or whatever. Joe is the person for to get that advice, and I would say from today that um, consider having a talk with Joe maybe at the end of the year, or something like that, just to make sure that you are preparing to study what you really want. Do you give shape to your degree the best that you you, you want? I can just add to that. So I guess an example of that might be you, you've decided that you're going to do your major in Spanish and a minor in French and perhaps at some point you would like to swap those around then that's like a really good example of changing that how will that affect the rest of your plan um, or perhaps you would like to count those French topics for electives instead and maybe do something different etc so they're just examples um, but hopefully that gives you an idea of you know when you would like to get more information that's a good time to check in with us. Thank you, Joe. Yes, there's a lot of flexibility in first year and to some extent in second year. Things get a bit more locked in in third year. All right. Okay. So moving on, uh, this is something we already touched on earlier. Uh, so um, most of you are starting as beginners, but uh, we also have an advanced stream for students who have already uh, studied uh, their target language up to year 12 or had an equivalent course of studies like I took for example an international baccalaureate in, in a language and they want to continue that so um, generally uh, these are uh, two streams that join in, in the second year yep. and sorry and and sometimes we've got students kind of falling in between beginners and advanced yeah so students who for example you know have done up to year 10 year 11 and sometimes have gone to a country and studied a little bit there, but have never actually done year 12 uh, of a language. So then it becomes a discussion with the, the topic coordinator, the course coordinator, to see which level is best for you. Okay, so what can you study uh, in your degree? So if you are taking a Bachelor of Languages, that's going to be 108 units. Every topic you take is 4.5 units. So 108 units would be 24, no, uh, 24, 24 topics. Yeah. So a full-time load is four yeah. topics per semester. Yeah. So eight, so eight topics per year is more than three. Years, yeah, three. Yeah. Or you can also study a language through a diploma in language. So roughly, um, how is the proportion here? Who is doing a bachelor? Okay. Oh, good on you. And the other's diploma? Oh, yeah. Okay. 
So the diploma is obviously uh, less units, and uh, however, that's spread over three years, so it's only 36 units. And it's and equivalent to a major. Yes. <coughs> um, you can study uh, your language as a major, that means uh, 36 units over three years, or um, if you're full time, or um, as a minor, so that means half of that over two years. Or you can also take uh, uh, a language topic as an elective, meaning basically you just take it uh, for that, that single, single topic. Um, some people may even decide to enroll as non-award students, and uh, so they have basically the commitment of attending uh, the classes, uh, but they don't get any credits. Can I just uh, maybe say why students would be taking a non-award topic? So, for example, you already got a full-time load, and you're not allowed, especially in first year, you're not allowed to do one more topic for credit. So, but what you can opt for is actually to do a non-award topic. It doesn't count, so the university can't tell you not to do it, because it's not credited. So some people choose to do that extra topic for zero credit, because they're interested in it, but knowing that it's not going to be credited to their degree, it's just an add-on that they're doing for pleasure, for example. Um, can I say something about the non-award? Um, can, do you need to pay this up front? Uh, if you do a non-award, can you put it on hex? Because we need to clarify this. Yeah, I'm not, actually, I'm not sure about that. Um, I would think that it's, it can be put on X, but I would need to check. So Joe would have known the answer, but unfortunately yeah. Yeah, she's, yeah. She's, she's gone. Yeah. Okay, so if, if you are interested, if you're ever in a, in a situation where you're thinking about a non award topic, uh, the best way to, to go would be to contact Joe and, and ask her the question. Yeah. And talking about fees, in any case, uh, for every topic in languages, you're just paying over $500 per uh, the topic, which is in the lowest band, so um, it's it's a good thing also to tell your friends. <laughs> it's, it's actually yes. the cheapest topics in yes. the humanities. Yeah. So that's 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 good. Yeah. So take the occasion. <laughs> um, so uh, also, what are uh, the degrees in which you can embed languages um, at Flinders? Well, the Bachelor of Arts. Uh, arts and Sciences and the Bachelor of Education that can be both primary and secondary. Any do yeah. Anybody doing education? No. Okay. And uh, we can combine the Bachelor of Languages also with the Bachelor of International Relations and Political Science and the Bachelor of Tourism and Events. Instead, the diploma can basically be combined with every or well, nearly every degree of this. But you need to be um, you, you, you cannot be an international student if you want to do the diploma. Okay. Uh, so the diploma is an interesting yeah. uh, feature of, of languages because some people study degrees such as, for example, medicine or engineering, and they actually can't do a language because there's just no room in their in the study uh, in the study program. So what they can do is actually enroll in the diploma of language, which is 36 units. There is one little catch, which is obviously you need to be able to fit those 36 units. And in order to do that, you need to add one year to s stretch everything one more year. So it's an additional year, which is equivalent to 36 units, so that you can actually scaffold your, your, your 36 unit over the three years. But it's worth the effort, as our friends there can, can confirm <laughs> you want to. Um, now, uh, Yes, we said languages can be studied around any, almost any other program. Um, and uh, we had students who in the past and still now are coming from different areas like business or law, uh, of course, arts, education, uh, health. I have a student from nursing and so on, psychology. So uh, virtually you can really combine it with pretty much everything. Um, so, uh, what else can we say here? Um, 
you can learn a language and obviously if you are uh, studying TESOL, uh, learning a language can also be an advantage. Uh, think about uh, becoming a teacher of English in Indonesia, for example, or in France or in Spain. Um, obviously, you need to learn uh, the target language if you want to be an effective teacher there. Okay, um, so uh, that's uh, something that we can keep in mind. Would you like to add anything? I'm happy with that? Okay. So, uh, what are we going to learn when uh, we have our uh, classes? Um, well, they are very interactive classes, very informal, friendly. Um, and so, obviously, you can expect to have a lot of uh, chatter. Uh, and um, uh, we will uh, talk, we will learn about how to speak the language. Uh, we will practice writing, we will practice listening um, a lot in Italian, uh, I can guarantee, um, and, uh, and of course reading. So these are the four basic skills that we have to uh, pick up when we're learning a language. Okay? But we're also going to um, uh, use these skills in order to not only to talk about uh, what's the weather today, um, or what day is tomorrow and so on, but uh, little by little we will expand the range of topics we can talk about and arrive to fairly complex uh, structures. And of course we will need to talk about structures, grammar, uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, some languages have a simpler grammar, others a bit more complex, but the benefit of learning grammar is that it also helps you to understand better why certain structures in English work in the way they do. Okay, so uh, that will basically push you to ask yourself questions you've never asked before, uh, possibly, uh, and uh, that's another advantage. Also, learning a language is not uh, something that we use just uh, for its own sake, but uh, we need to learn a language also to understand our target culture. Okay, so uh, if we're talking about French, we will talk about French culture, Italian, Italian culture, from different angles, different perspectives, and in each language we have different culture topics which are also part of your degrees. So it could be history, could be art, could be other things yes. like here if, we are. Yeah. If I can make a quick point before we move to the, the, this slide, is that Yes, you are studying one language, but we need to think of in, we need to think about language in terms of connections. So you've heard of a family of language languages called romance languages. So these romance languages have something in common is that they've all kind of em emerged from Latin. So yes, you do study Italian. Yes, you do study Spanish example to talk, to talk about two romance languages but but there are also connections between those languages and sometimes those connections are highlighted in the classes I mean I, I, I teach French and obviously there, there is a you know a very strong connection between French and Italian uh, and French and Spanish as well but also with English there's thousands of words in the English language that actually uh, are common between Fr French and, and, and English uh, so it's interesting to know why and how that happens as well. So, to give you an idea of uh, some of the cultural topics uh, we're teaching in various languages, we have, for example, French gastronomy, French cinema, uh, um, called culture courses in uh, Indonesian politics and development, society and culture in the different languages. Um, we, we'll see how we start the, the topic in Italian style, design and fashion, so woohoo, good for you. Um, and uh, we will make you an offer you cannot refuse. We also have Italian Mafia um, <laughs> and Greek mythology. Right. And, and, so, and, and yes. we have Maria teaching Greek mythology. Exactly. He, he's just, you finished I teaching it? the Odyssey. Oh, you uh, finished the Odyssey. Okay. I just finished the Odyssey and I'm teaching Greek mythology. So, and Greek mythology is a very interesting topic because it's one of those very broad topics that can actually be of benefit to a variety of disciplines. So things about, obviously, people doing languages, 
people doing modern Greek, but also people doing history, or people doing archaeology, and so on and so forth, people doing philosophy. So, um, these are... language. Which one? We have so, so many things within English as well, like Achilles Hill, yeah. and, and the, there are so many other things that stem from Greek. And the relationship between Greek and, and yeah. other languages as well. Yeah. So, these are, as you can see, they are topics that are kind of related to one particular language. But when you look at them, they are actually multi, multicultural and multilingual. If you look at the, the uh, from play to palette, yes, it's about French astronomy, but it goes beyond that. It talks about the origin of, of, of French astronomy, which has origin in Italy and so on. French cinema. Again, French cinema is, is really about European cinema. There's so many, um, you know, there's so much cooperation between different, the, the, the different countries in relation to cinema. And that feeds into French cinema. Politics and development as well. It's, this is about Asia, not just about Indonesia, uh, and so on and so forth. Italian style, of course, which of course is going to talk about Italy, but it goes beyond that as well. And that's the reason why most culture topics are actually uh, taught in English rather than in the target language, because we want students from uh, larger uh, groups to uh, join the courses and possibly get interested into also that particular culture. And so um, another thing you can tell your friends. <laughs> Uh, yeah. We've only got about five or six yes, minutes. Yes, so, so we need to, to go quickly into yeah. TESOL. So what's TESOL? TESOL is teaching English to speakers of other languages. And basically, it's a, a set of disciplines that uh, teaches you how to teach English. Okay, uh, And um, so uh, you, you, we learn uh, theories and, of course, also practical ways uh, to do and to become effective English teachers. Um, so uh, that's available to students at all levels, from undergraduate to PhD uh, level. And, and you can take it as an elective as well. Exactly, and you don't need to have uh, uh, pre previous knowledge or teaching experience before uh, you start this. So how can you? Yeah. Do you want me to do that one? Okay. Yeah. All right. So uh, you, you can see here, there's a, a variety of things that you can do in TESOL. Uh, I mentioned that you could actually take an elective, but uh, there are uh, various ways you can study TESOL. You can study it as a minor. Please note that there is no major in TESOL, but there is a, a TESOL minor that you can take in a variety of bachelors, such as languages and the Bachelor of Arts. But there are specific uh, courses that you can take in TESOL as well from a graduate certificate, which is six months full time. So it doesn't really commit you for very, very long. You can do it in six months and that can actually uh, get you to, to get a, um, a qualification to go and teach overseas, for example. Uh, then to the graduate diploma in TESOL, to the master of TESOL and the PhD. We've got uh, quite a few PhD students doing TESOL as well. Uh, there is a batch of letters, so I'm not going to have um, time to actually go into the details of what a batch of letters is, but uh, simply put, it's it's equivalent to a diploma. It's it's a, it's the same uh, type of degree. You've got 36 units, and it, it's done over a number of years. So here is a list of uh, topics that uh, you may have to learn and to study if you take. Uh, uh, if you, if you decide to study diesel, so things like second language acquisition, language assessment, linguistics, English linguistics, and you will also have the opportunity to do uh, real work experience. So you will have a 70 hour placement um, in, um, at, at TAFE, um, and also uh, volunteer due to schemes at TAFE, and uh, you may even decide to. Uh, some experience in uh, another country, so like uh, uh, Indonesia or France or Spain, uh, as language assistant essentially. Uh, that's also something possible. Okay, so now so, we're moving to more uh, administrative things. So we've actually uh, finished our little presentation. 
Uh, we're going to stay back a little bit if you've got any questions for, for us. But very quickly, um, uh, this tells you how to enroll and register. So you need to log in into the student system. And uh, you need to select my enrollment tab. Uh, there's a, a few things, a few steps that you need to go through, such as uh, agreeing on the declaration, and then uh, finding your topics that are available for your course. So are you already all enrolled in your topics? OK. OK, so that's okay, beautiful. So that. we can actually uh, skip that. In terms of network, so Wi-Fi, it's really important. You can access a Wi-Fi called EDU Rome or EDU Rome. And uh, in order to, to actually uh, be able to be on the, that network, you need to have your fan, which is uh, the first letters of your surname plus a number at flinders.edu.au. And then I uh, put Flinders password as the password. What you have chosen to log in in your yeah. system. It's a fairly reliable network. On very rare occasions, there's issues, but it's fairly rare. Yeah. Um, so here in the student camp compass you will find all the information also about the current orientation week um, so uh, are you ready familiar with that have you already taken a look into that so compass is basically a website or a web page that is an orientation web page so it provides all sorts of information that is very useful in terms of you know um, uh, the, 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 the topics, your course of study, uh, support and services, uh, what's happening around campus. There's always things happening around campus, and uh, you know administration, um, financial aspects, where you can find policies and procedures, uh, and it gives you the opportunity to provide feedback as well. If you haven't done it yet, remember you need to get a student card and you can ask for that. Uh, basically, uh, you can order that online and go to pick it up from uh, downstairs in, in Disconnect. In disconnect. Um, that allows you to access uh, the library or, uh, for example, if you are uh, studying like uh, Italian, for example, uh, in the city campus you will need a swipe card to get the lifts okay otherwise you need to use the stairs which is not a bad thing uh, but um, so the card allows you to to access after hours to uh, certain services and so on and remember that when you get the card you will need to put a student sticker on that and replace it every year okay uh, otherwise uh, you cannot request student discounts around the city and uh, well, I think we can probably wrap up here. Or, um, we yeah, have a yeah. Few just just very quickly, yeah. uh, this, the first weeks are very important. So uh, this is orientation week. So try to attend as many sessions that are relevant to you as possible. Make sure that you've got your ID card, that you've organized your enrollment, and so on and so forth. Make sure that you can access the, the network. Uh, now, the other thing is flow. F L O, which is Flinders Online. So you are going to, once you've got your card, once you've got everything organized, you'll be able to access that, um, that flow. So it's actually, and you'll see through Compass and everything, it, tell you, it will tell you how to do it. But basically, flow is the uh, learning management system that we use here. It's based on, 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 a, on a software called Canvas. Uh, if you're familiar with Canvas from school, for example, uh, and uh, that's where you're going to find all your topics and all the content for your topics. So you will go into, into Flow, and then you will have little um, squares with the name of your topics. You click on the squares, and it will uh, get you to welcome pages for your topics uh, from which you will be able to access all the content. So it's a very important thing to do before you start so that you know how the semester is going to organize for each topic. Yeah, take a look at that. And so week one, okay, so very quickly week one. Now, I need to impress on you that there are classes in week one. Very often people think that there are no classes in week one. S classes start in week one. It could be either a lecture or even a tutorial. 
uh, traditionally lectures are in week one, tutorials are in week two, but no longer, that's no longer the case. You need to really look at your timetable to make sure of what starts in week one. And, and in languages, you will probably have pretty much everything starting in week one. Your, your, your tutorials will be in week one. So make sure that you're aware of it, make sure that you're aware of where the classes are. It would be actually a good idea if you've got, you know, uh, 20 minutes, half an hour, to go around the different buildings and see, okay, which class you're going to be uh, required to, to be uh, going to next week, so that you know you already know where you are, rather than trying to uh, go around for 15, 20 minutes uh, next week uh, before you can find the, the, the class. Uh, talking about getting lost, there is an app called Lost on Campus that you can download. Uh, yeah, it's, it's okay. I wouldn't say it's a fantastic <laughs> app, but, but it's, it's useful. If you're lost, it's definitely useful. Um, okay, right. week two. So again, make sure that you attend what you need to attend. Make sure that you are aware of all the services that are available to you. Uh, there's Oasis. There's a, a number of uh, support services that you, are, uh, that you can access. And uh, everything is listed in Compass. If you want to know about Oasis and... Uh, other um, you know, uh, student counseling and, and uh, the, the student union and, and so on and so forth. Oasis will, uh, sorry, Compass will tell you, uh, will give you all that information. Scholarships too. You can also apply for scholarships if you need to and you don't need to be a top performing student for them. So there are options available, so keep an eye yeah. on that. Uh, and that reminds me that there is one very important piece of information that is missing from our presentation is that through languages, there are programs that ta can take you overseas. So we will talk about these programs yeah. in class, in various uh, venues. Usually people go in second or third year. So uh, if you're in first year, you'll have to wait probably for another year, but we will uh, provide details of, of all that in class. Absolutely. Eric, sorry, just on that, um, I think that the uh, group that runs that is called Global Experience. So if you check them out, they will talk about the obviously experiences. Yeah. 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 And we also have a language club, and uh, so um, keep an eye on uh, what they're organizing. Uh, Jared is uh, the languages rep student representative, so um, it's a good thing to keep in touch with him as well. And All right, so we're yeah. probably going to stop here because yes. I, I think we've talked about everything we're else already, anyway. Yeah, and and uh, maybe leave a few minutes for your questions yeah. if you've got any at this stage. If you don't have questions, feel free to contact us. Uh, you will find our emails uh, you know, fairly easily through the, uh, the Finders website. Do you have any questions about anything we talked about? Yes, um, Anastasia. What is the best way to transfer from beginner stream to uh, advanced stream? Uh, do, we need to go, uh, do we need to complete three years, three, four years before we move to the fourth year? Or can we so, the first year and then transfer to the advanced stream? Okay, so if you are a beginner yeah. student now, have you done any French before? Did you, you study French, don't you? Yeah. Uh, did you study French before? Uh, I just did an online course. Okay, so you don't have any formal French at school, okay. So what is going to happen is that you're going to do a specific year which is called beginners, and then in second year, you will merge with the first year advanced students. And that way you will be in, 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 in and class. Then for three That's more right. Years at, and the, uh, no, you will, you will, you, the major can only be three years. So you can't study for four years in the major. Um, so you will get to first... The advanced stream is for three years as well. Yes, but so the, the, the beginner stream is first, second, and third level. The advanced stream is second, third, and fourth level. So you can't transfer from the beginner stream to the advanced stream? You, no, because there is no... There is no it's, not a, it's not a matter of transferring. What you can do is probably, if you've got space in your degree, you could potentially study the fourth year. Nothing prevents you from doing that. But, but it, needs, it requires for you to have space in your degree at a particular point in time when you finish your I'm degree. just doing a, a diploma, so I'm 
So in the diploma, you can't, you can't do that. So in the diploma, you are locked into first, second, and third level. Okay. Now, you might be able to do the fourth level outside of the diploma, but it depends on what degree you're, you're doing and what's your situation at that point in time. Okay. Yep. I might just say something from that, because I started as um, beginner level. Um, so basically, um, I'm working, so this year would be like intermediate. Um, and uh, in in this stream, there's like basically two intermediates. So you've got sort of like low intermediate and uh, next year. Upper then, intermediate. Yeah, upper intermediate, um, which is almost at your deadline. Um, but then going further than that um, would mean um, yeah, going into something else. But um, from my perspective, uh, my actually uh, a tip that I would advise is. is um, it's actually really, really good to, to go through the levels rather than skipping because uh, in those different levels there's, there's really relevant information. Um, so for my Indonesian, for instance, first year was about going from my ABCs to learning about like, because uh, it uses a lot of affixes, so using that, so uh, a broad, really, really broad and really, really good understanding of how the language works and then it's this year will be like a training into black politics and social issues and things like that. Yeah. Um, yes. and sorry, just <laughs> while I've got the floor, yeah. Um, so I'm the student representative um, in languages. So once you work out your flow, I think my email's in there. Um, it, so basically um, I'm the um, sort of in between between students and, and staff. So if you've got like concerns about languages or you know, you, uh, like I mentioned about the services and that, you just want to send me an email, um, yeah, I, can, I can reply to you. All right, thank you very much. Thanks. Okay, any other questions? Nope. Where's the toilet on the way? <laughs> All right, so it's not very far, actually. Oh, um, it's just, it's just, it's just, yeah, just, just outside. Just downstairs yeah. here, yeah. yeah. Okay, just outside. There's one downstairs, you go yeah. down the stairs, and just right in that corner. Yeah. Just in the corner, so I don't go to the toilet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. and is this the main hall that we use? We will study the languages, especially well, some TESOL. languages are taught. TESOL is taught here. French, Spanish are taught here. Italian, Greek, and Indonesian are taught at um, mm -hmm. a city campus. And where where TESOL? Here. In here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In, yeah. in this hall. In one of these buildings could be this one, or could be humanities, or uh, could be social sciences itself, which oh, is the next building. So you need to pay attention to the room, and that's what Eric was suggesting before. Take a look at uh, the, the timetable, so get familiar with the campus, yeah. and maybe today, if you're already here, go to uh, locate the rooms where you will take your lessons. Uh, so. You, next time when you come here, you go there without any, oh my god, a master kind of, so that's idea. Yeah, because next week there's going to be a lot of people around. Yes, it's going to be A lot of movements, a lot of people looking for room, so yeah. if you already know where you're going, I think you'll... And you might you'll even help ahead. someone to find their way. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, so... Okay, and, and look, if you, if you were going to get lost next week, and not being able to find your room and be a little bit late, don't panic about it. Okay, we'll be fine. We'll we'll, we'll wait for you. Okay? City campus is easier because yeah, the, well, the first number in the room number is the level. So uh, room four one six means uh, level four. Okay, and then you can just need to find the room. So no excuses. <laughs> whereas, whereas here it's a bit more complicated. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, guys. Well, thank you very much for see coming. See you next week. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, we'll see you next week. See you. And thank you to you.